Hello everyone, this is John from Volga Kitten Studios and welcome back to my uh, series on mobile development. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually talk about building stuff. Uh, so I've gotten you set up with a, uh, with a global node modules directory and everything so you can do this. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to actually do it. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. First I'm going to go ahead and check my bash RC and make sure, yeah, okay. Uh, I pulled it up one time and it was blank, and I don't know why that was. Just a glitch in Termux, probably, or Nano, due to my screen recorder running in the background. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So, that's uh, I just wanted to go ahead and check that. Uh, but let's just go ahead and um, CD into our devil, um, just to make sure that if anything gets installed. Um, then it gets installed, or if anything gets installed globally, it gets installed to the proper location. So, uh, what I'm going to do at this point in time is I'm going to go ahead and install a couple of modules that are going to build stuff for us. So, I'm going to install uh, Webpack Cly. So, I also want Gulp Cly as well as both Webpack and Gulp themselves. And I'm going to install that globally. Okay, now that we have those, uh, I just want to go ahead and show you that we have everything that we need in our package.json as well. So, go ahead and open this up with Nano and uh, dev dependencies and everything uh, we're looking at uh, all of the Babel stuff some of the stuff is actually uh, older and you don't need it um, but it's there just in case uh, there's any any kind of um, legacy issues with uh, older packages and whatnot um, just a few different packages that I use on a regular basis such as uh, tiny ECS and snapjs uh, short ID uh, HTML to canvas animate CSS uh, small little packages that do certain things um, so you can take those out if you need to uh, but also keep SAS in here uh, as well as um, as well as Jade uh, I use the legacy version of Jade uh, there is an updated version called Pug uh, if you're unaware of what those are uh, don't actually worry about it at this point in time um, we will discuss some of that stuff in greater detail at a later point in time um, but anyway yeah so all of that stuff is in the node modules directory within our devil folder. And uh, the reason that I'm pointing this out is because normally without setting it up with a global uh, with a global environment variable, what will happen is you'll install it locally inside of the package that you, or inside of the project that you're actually working on. Which that's the preferred method, and that's because if you have to make any kind of edits or anything to the packages, uh, they'll be local, and you won't have to worry about it if it's a dependency in another project you've been working on. But honestly, in my opinion, if you're if you're a good programmer, uh, which you should be striving to be anyway, uh, you would write code in your hacks uh, in such a way that it would not break other projects as well. You would uh, you'd you'd fix you'd fix the problem and uh, have it be a universal fix you know so that's just a that's just a personal thing that's that's why I don't have any problem using a uh, using a global setup like this because that's what I'm gonna do if I have any projects that are using an uh, using a node module that I have installed if I'm gonna make an update to the node module itself or if I'm gonna hack that node module then I'm gonna hack it in such a way that it's gonna work for all of my projects universally but uh, enough about that uh, let's go ahead and continue on with what we need to do. So, uh, if you haven't run Termux Setup Storage yet, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to go ahead and do that. So, it's uh, just Termux Setup Storage, and what this does is it gives you access to the SD card um, with Termux itself. So, I've already ran it, so it's not gonna come up with a pop up for me, but uh, you will see a pop up to allow it access, and just go ahead and click allow, and that will give you access. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, CD into um, SD card uh, Droid Script, and from here, uh, I'm going to install a uh, framework that I've written to make it easier to uh, build programs. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to Google Chrome. 
And uh, these are frameworks that I've been working on for a couple of years. I actively work on them all the time, and I'm making updates and whatnot. So uh, I haven't actually written any. Um, this is a fairly new one. I haven't actually written too much in the README, uh, but I will be updating that very, very soon. So if you see this before that's happened, uh, then I do apologize. I don't have the documentation ready for it, but it is coming. I promise you that. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and request desktop, desktop site. And I'm going to clone this URL here. And one thing that I like to do is I like to make sure that I don't have to type in my username every single time. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get clone and paste this in. But I'm going to go to the beginning of the URL. I'm going to put in my username. And the at symbol right before GitHub. And let's see. Ah, yes. Uh, so I'll need to go ahead and specify another directory that I want to put it into. So uh, we'll just call it test for now. That's that's perfectly fine. That's valid. So we'll clone it into test. And I'm going to go ahead and CD into test. And ls this out. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do here is to actually change the name of the HTML file, the main HTML file. And this is for building APKs with DroidScript. You want to make sure that you have uh, the, same, the same casing and the same spelling uh, for your main HTML file that you do for the directory that it's actually in. So what we're going to do is we're going to move uh, sexyds to test.ds just like that and then it's ready to go so uh, let's see let's go ahead and pop over here to droid script make sure it's there uh, we'll probably have to restart it so Interesting. Let me go ahead and move the pocket MVC because that is another one. Well, let me nano it first, see what it looks like. Oh, and that's the default HTML file. I'm not too worried about that. Hmm. Okay, I'm just a I'm just a big bumbling idiot. <laughs> idiot. So we actually have to name it HTML, not DS. So. HTML. I apologize about that. Now it should actually show up in here. Uh, so again, I'm going to have to restart it. There it is. So let's go ahead and open this up. And you'll see that the, the view actually loads. All right, so let's examine this a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open that up in droid script or droid edit excuse me um, we can just slide this over and move on down to droid script and open up our test folder now the first thing that you'll notice is there's not actually a package.json file or a node modules file in here at all and that is on purpose that's because it's using the global one so no worries there um, the way this framework works is that you go into the SRC folder and uh, 
you open up the main.js file. This is where all the magic happens. Uh, this is where we're going. This is the entry point into the application itself. That's where all of the uh, JavaScript will be loaded from. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the Webpack file, first and foremost. Um, this is a little bit different. So what we're doing is we're actually using a variable called modules. And we're grabbing uh, the process environment variable called node path. And that's where we're using the uh, resolve. The modules key in resolve is uh, using that variable. So it's going to use uh, the environment variable that we set up in our dot bash rc file. So uh, that's just uh, being loaded over here in the resolve loader as well. And uh, you can see the entry point and the output directories in here. You can just change those as you need to if you want to. Um, but again, like I said, documentation for the framework that I'm using is coming. Um, but uh, this is actually how you link to that with Webpack. So let's go ahead and see that in action. Um, well, let's see. Let's just go ahead and open up this main.js file here. And um, let's just throw an alert in somewhere for the hell of it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to come back over into Termux. And since we're already in here, all we got to do is run webpack and build that script. I also have it set up to uh, compile SAS as well. Uh, so there we go. And I will get to the SAS in just a moment. Let's go ahead and open up test. And there it is. There's our alert. And it's as simple as that. Okay. So as for the SAS, um, I have a gulp file in here that does a lot of different things. It creates controllers and views and stuff like that for you. Um, but for SAS, we just want to run the SAS command with the scan flag. And we want to scan the directory that the SAS is actually in. So ah, that's actually dependent on required there. It looks like I might have to make some updates to that uh, repository, um, the devil repository that is. So let me open up a new session and go ahead and put that in there. So let me go ahead and cd into devil and npm i tech s require and that's actually a development dependency. So We'll install that. Okay, now that it's installed, let's go ahead and try to run that again. Uh, matter of fact, let's make some edits first and see if we can see if we can make sure that we uh, get this working. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over to my Android edit, and I'm gonna go into SRC, go into the SESS directory, open up the main SES. Uh, so right now I'm making the background silver. Let's make it blue. And go ahead and save that. And compile the SAS. Yep, yep, still missing dependencies. I could have swore that I committed an update to that repository before I reset my phone, but apparently I did not. 
I'm going to have to make sure that I do that. Now that I made a video about it, I'm going to remember it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, this will all be automatically done for you. Um, when I, by the time you end up viewing this. So, no worries. Okay, let's go ahead and try this again. Make sure that the dependencies are working. Oh, God. Well, honestly, I don't feel like fixing it in the middle of recording a video, so... Uh, just know that that will work whenever you download it. Uh, you will be able to install or to compile SAS um, with this framework if you decide to go that way. Um, otherwise, uh, just dig through the code and uh, check it out. Um, check out some of the stuff that I'm doing. And, you know, if you want to set it up by yourself, uh, that Webpack config file is definitely something that you want to go ahead and copy and paste. And, uh, get everything set up with the uh, global node modules directory. Um, other than that, uh, for CSS and everything, if you just want to write uh, regular CSS instead of SAS, then um, that is actually held within the distribution, the distribution folder right here. So uh, this is connected and everything so we can go ahead and I can prove this just by changing that and saving it and then running the running the program like that so that's where the CSS is held um, I'm sure that Jade is probably broken as well so I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, go into there, so I'm going to go ahead and go update uh, this uh, this framework here uh, with the most current versions and everything. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's the gist of it. That's how you develop Android applications. Um, I've also figured out how to do uh, web development on Android as well uh, with a full-fledged uh, LAMP stack. So uh, that will be the next video. I'll show you how to create websites and uh, use virtual machines and all that stuff with Apache. And uh, I'll just keep these videos going, showing you different stuff. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. And I'll see you in the next one.